few together and then you can get going on some yourself. You can use any of the, here's the things you have that you can use here. You can use any of the basic identities or just algebraic skills. At this point, this won't jump out at you, but maybe at some point it will. You could replace the top of that. If we're going to make this into a single trig function, eventually it's going to be one thing. We, we have this binomial here, two terms. You can replace that 1 minus cos squared with what? What's it equal to? Sine squared. If you have sine squared over sine, sine squared over sine is like sine times sine over sine, so this is sine x. There's your single trig function. You probably don't want to just go straight to that, even if you can see that. If you're writing it down and showing your stuff, showing your steps, then probably. For this next one here, this might not jump out at you. I want to give you two two ways that you might do it. Right now, since you've just learned about Pythagorean identities, you might recognize that that's equal to, what's it equal to? That's equal to cosecant squared over cosecant. And then if you simplify that, you get cosecant. The thing is, at the end, people don't tend to remember that Pythagorean identity. They just remember the, the, the basic one. You can still do it. It's just going to take more steps. Most people only seem to remember that one. The other, you know, method two here, we could put, or I think a lot of people, their first step here is to change everything to sine and cosine. One plus cos squared over sine squared and over one over sine. This will work. It'll eventually get to cosecant. It's just going to be a lot longer. They might change this. They might change this one here to something in common, sine squared over sine squared plus cos squared over sine squared, the whole thing over 1 over sine. I forgot my squared there. They, they would maybe combine that together, flip it over, cancel stuff. Eventually, you're going to get down to this. This will go quite a ways down there and then get there. There's more than one way to do this. I'll leave that one for you to finish if you want. Some of these, it might not be obvious that you're going to use Pythagorean identities. Probably if you have something that has two terms in it, though, that's a good chance you're going to uh, use Pythagorean identities at some point. The ones we did last day where you were simplifying, they look different at the start. This, has, this thing has two binomials in it. The way you got rid of those binomials and made it a single trig function was at some point you had to cancel out a pair of binomials for whichever method you used. At some point you crossed off a couple binomial terms, factors. Even on this one, if you did this, you notice at some point you cross off some binomial factors. Here there's not two binomials. Only one of them has a binomial. So the way you get it to be a single term is at some point you're going to use a, a Pythagorean identity. Probably most people's uh, first step on this. Can you uh, can you try something? We'll pop. <clears throat> well, I think most people's first step, the way they um, end up teaching themselves trig identities, is to change everything to sine and cosine first. Secant you could change to one over cosine. Sine you can just leave, and tangent you can change to sine over cosine. Or in other words, you could write it as 1 over cos minus sine squared over cos. So that's all that is, is using those basic identities. And then make a common denominator. Oh, wait a second. They already have a common denominator, right? Oh, my goodness. Um, they all, they already have a I almost tricked myself. They they already have a common denominator, right? Yeah. One minus sine squared, and then it looks similar to one of the ones up above, right? What can you do now? Uh, this you can change to cos squared over cos, and then it's just cosine theta. So the rule is, I don't know what the rule is. They're all equal to cos. No, they're not. We have different things up above there. 
Um, this one, I don't know if you've tried this one yet. The second one, if you're trying that, you might you might resort to the same thing as a starting point, which is change everything to sine and cosine. Um, if you are if you're deciding you're going to do that, what you might recognize is these two fractions right here. You notice that this, which was this, has a denominator of sine. This thing, which is now this whole thing, has a denominator of sine. So you might use that to recognize that you should write this as, instead of sine, write it as sine squared over sine to have a common denominator because then that is the same as this whole thing. Does that make sense? If you changed all those things, I don't know if it makes it worse with the like colors on there. but okay, If you change each of those things, cosecant becomes 1 over sine. Sine becomes sine squared over sine. Uh, because I wanted them all to have the same, I wanted these two to have the same denominator, so I can add them together. Well, you times this by sine x over sine x. It's like 3 is like 3 times 3 over 3, right? So sine is like sine times sine over sine, right? That's all that is. Then when you what? Uh, I don't know because this one already has a denominator, right? Of what I want. If you're gonna if you're gonna deal with that, then possibly you add those two together. So uh, one minus sine squared over sine x. If you can see several steps ahead, make sure you still put the steps down on here. If you have two fractions divided, a common, again, a common strategy is multiply by the reciprocal, write it like this. Instead of this one divided by this one, some people write it as that one times the reciprocal of this, sine over cos. Because then you can, you see that you have a sine and a sine you can get rid of. And you can write it as 1 minus sine squared over cos, looks like the one next to it now. You can make this cos squared over cos, which is which is just cos, right? There's there's definitely more than one way to do these things. So some people at this stage, let's pretend you started out differently. I want to do a different way with you here so that you see that there's more than one way. If we started out with this uh, thing up here, cosecant minus sine over cotangent, what you, what you can do is, uh, oops, instead of making that common denominator there, you might realize that this would have a denominator of sine. This actually has a denominator of sine. What you can do right off the bat is you can say, I want to multiply this by sine over sine. Because then when you multiply it out, you get you know sine times cosecant and sine times sine. What is sine times cosecant if you multiply that out? Well, they're reciprocals, right? They're reciprocals, so it multiplies out to 1. And sine times sine is sine squared. On the bottom, you could just leave it like this for now. You could change this to cos over sine times sine. Right? Cotangent, the same as cos over sine. And then you can write this as, you could actually make the change on the top if you want right now, but we'll do this. You just have cosine. It's just a quicker way of getting there. Neither of them are right or wrong. They're just both the, you know different ways of doing that. So there's the kind of the common denominator approach. Sometimes you can do it quite quickly with the multiply by something on the top and the bottom approach, just if it happens to work out that it'll cancel some things. Then it, then it's the same, right? Then it's the same as that. Thank you. Can you try these? There's only six here. And you can try moving on to five, six as well. All it is is doing proofs where you're doing two things the same as each other.